A common way to experimentally determine the rate law of a reaction is often referred to as the initial rate method. And a typical setup would look something like this. Let's say you're studying the reaction of hydrogen and bromine to give you hydrogen bromide. You do the experiment or do the reaction once with hydrogen and bromine concentrations of 0.02 and 0.01 respectively and you measure the initial rate to be 2 times 10 to the negative 3. You do the reaction one more time but you hold hydrogen's concentration constant and you change the concentration of bromine. That way any effect on the rate is only going to come from the one chemical you changed. And you do it a third time and you do the opposite. We hold bromine's concentration constant and we'll change the concentration of hydrogen. So comparing trials one and two. It looks like when you double the concentration of bromine the result is that the rate also doubles. So if the rate is going to be proportional to the concentration of bromine raised to some exponent x it looks like x is equal to 1. Now, in other words, it's first order with respect to bromine. Because whatever you do to the concentration of bromine, the rate increases by the same factor. Now let's compare trials 1 and 3, where you vary the concentration of hydrogen. In this case, it looks like you've tripled the concentration of hydrogen. Increased it by a factor of 3. And the result, if you divide these two, is that the rate increases by a factor of 9. So the rate, again, is going to be proportional to hydrogen's concentration. Rate to some exponent, we'll call it y. Here it looks like y is equal to 2, or it's the square or second order with respect to hydrogen. Because whatever factor you increase hydrogen's concentration, the effect is the rate changes by the square of that value. So putting these two together, it looks like the rate is proportional to hydrogen squared and bromine and in math if you want to make proportionality and equality you factor in a constant and for rate laws that constant is usually a lowercase k so that would be the rate law for this reaction given the data second order with respect to hydrogen first order with respect to bromine and if you add up the exponents you get three so it's third o order overall and we can calculate the value of K by going back and picking one of these trials say number one and plug in the data that we're given so you plug in the rate it's going to equal to K times 0.02 squared times 0.01 so you solve for K and you get 500 typically we ignore the units of the rate constant because they're going to vary depending on what the order of the reaction is and if you wanted to check yourself you can go back and repeat this for trials 2 and 3 and you should get the same answer Let's look at one other example. And again, you'll notice the setup is pretty much identical. You gotta have at least three trials, three reactions. You run the reaction the first time. Second time, you run it again, but you keep one constant, change the other. Then you have to run it at least a third time where you flip it, you hold the other one constant. 
So if we compare trials one and two, concentration of NO is held constant. Concentration of chlorine is doubled. And if you divide these two, it looks like the rate is increasing by a factor of four. So if the rate is proportional to chlorine raised to some exponent x, looks like here that x is equal to two. Because the factor that you change the concentration gives you a rate that is the square of that amount. Two goes up four. You compare trials one and three, it looks like when you tr double the concentration of NO, the rate isn't changing at all. This can occur in a reaction where varying the concentration will have no effect on the rate. And this is what's known as a zero order reaction, or zero order with respect to NO. In other words, if you try to set it up as a proportionality, where the rate is proportional to concentration of NO to some exponent y, y is equal to zero. So like before, we can put the two together We'll go ahead and put in our rate constant. And anything raised to um, the zero power is one. So we can rewrite it where it's just K times chlorine squared. And if it's zero order, we typically don't bother showing it in our rate law.